Good evening and welcome to tonight's Christmas Eve service. It's, uh, I'm Pastor Dave. It's my privilege to welcome you and, and to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Uh, not how we intended to have this service tonight. I pray that wherever you are, you're safe, you're inside, you're warm. Uh, don't know where you're watching. I know uh, we have friends that watch from Florida, although I understand you're supposed to get some rather cold air uh, this week. So um, I just pray that you're blessed with this Christmas. I ask you now to join us as we go through the candle lighting process uh, for the uh, Christ candle. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, in him was life. And that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man. Voice, a Savior is born. A Savior is born indeed. Please join me in this evening's call to worship. It comes to us from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord is that what I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart tells me to seek your face. I am confident I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will wait for the Lord. I will take heart and I will wait upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. What child is this who laid to rest On Mary's lap is sleeping Whom angels greet with anthems sweet While shepherds watch are keeping This, this is Christ the King Whom shepherds guard and angels sing Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate, where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christians fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, 
whom shepherds guard and dangers sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and dangers sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Today's scripture from John 1, verses 1 through 7. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Then came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. And from John chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the men's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, as we are blessed to see the light from your holy star, so too are we called to shine your holiness to the world. Shine in and through us to your glory. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts would be pleasing to you. Amen. I am not much of a morning person. I, I need to wake up slowly. No lights to shower and dress. I do need a cup of coffee to kickstart my attitude in the morning, though. And it's not just the caffeine. I don't need the caffeine. I just love the flavor, and that's what gets me going. I start out in the dark. And sometimes my head clears a little. The Dark Ages ran from the 5th through the 9th centuries. It wasn't a caffeine issue, and there were no more blind people then than there are today. The darkness was due to people refusing to see. Napoleon was kind of an example of that. He had that kind of an attitude. He was a a military tactician and a political leader, but he was blinded by arrogance. In the the Battle of Waterloo, he made this statement to one of his generals that before the evening was over, Wellington would be his prisoner. One of the generals of Napoleon responded to him, man proposes but God disposes. And Napoleon responded, Napoleon proposes and Napoleon disposes. That arrogance led to his downfall because that night, Napoleon was Wellington's prisoner. It's frequently said that there are none so blind as those who will not see. Who was the really blind person in the scripture that Cliff read for us? The blind man or the ones who refused to see Jesus as 
the Messiah, as the prophesied Messiah. Sometimes the blind see things that sighted people miss. Blindness affects all of us from time to time. Some parents are blind to the behaviors of their children. Christian, Christians can be blind to the good that generous and compassionate non-Christians do. Sometimes police, pastors, doctors, attorneys, and teachers can be blind to the wrong that people of their own profession commit. Not always, to be certain, but sometimes. Politicians on the left can't see the sense of those on the right, and those on the right refuse to see the good that the left accomplishes. What is it that makes us so blind? Ego and pride? Stubbornness and idiocy? And Satan and those who promote evil all cause us to be blind. Let's take this night, this opportunity, to look at God's absolute light. In the beginning there was light, true light. And God created witnesses to the true light. The darkness has not and will not overcome the light or understand it. So scripture begins, in the beginning there was light, true light. In, in the beginning is a problem for many of us. It's a, it's a phrase that clarifies, but it also confuses at the same time, because there was no beginning for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is simply God's way of explaining that no matter how far back mankind can look, God was always there. We can go back however far you want to go back. There's never a time that precedes God. Jesus not, was not created light. Jesus was that eternal light. On this night of Christmas Eve, we celebrate the true light. Jesus Christ has come to us as an infant. Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, true light. The light of Jesus is difficult for us to imagine. It's it's hard for the created to perceive the breadth or depth or height of God's imagination. We can't fathom his love or light or his many great attributes. There's nothing that we can compare God to. There's just no way for us to cross over into the infinite and imagine it. The greatest minds of symphonic writing, architectural drawings, movie creation, compassionate thoughtfulness, philosophical thought, or any other human conception can appreciate the concepts of God. We just can't fathom it. His true light is but one of many tools that God makes available to us. True light is only mentioned twice in the entire Bible. This is the first one. The second one is in John's Gospel. It's in John's letter to the Christians living in and around Ephesus. In, John, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 8, John wrote a new command as a reminder to the Ephesians and to us today, the true light of Jesus has always shined, and it exposes all wrongs. When we fail in this new command, we are exposed. We're exposed because we are evil. What we're doing is evil. 
That new command, see, only makes sense in the arrival of Emmanuel because Jesus' light led the way and leads the way today. The new command is given in 1 John 2, 9 through 11. So we've got the preface in 1 John 2, verse 8. Now we have the command in verses 9 through 11. The new command is explicit. We are to love our brother who is in the darkness and walks in the darkness. And John also gives a reason why we are to love those whom we deem unlovable. If we do not love those who are in the darkness, we are not Christ-like as we would presume we are. See, John says if we don't love the unlovable, we are still in the darkness just as blind and no different than those whom we fail to love. Wow. We're not just a little less than perfect. No, John, what John is saying is we're as bad as the unlovable. You see, God created us to be witnesses to the true light, the light that we celebrate this night, the light of Jesus Christ, the true light that was born in a manger in a stable in Bethlehem. See, Christians sometimes, actually many times, live in a false truth world. They believe that the apostles and today's pastors and priests are called to evangelize and disciple others, and that's just not true. We are all called as missionaries to one another. Another wrong belief is that John the Baptist alone prepared the way of the Lord. That was what John did. That's, that's why he was born. Well, preparing the way of the Lord is a task that wasn't done one time, but is a continuing task, something that we live into today. We are created, we are called, and we're commanded to be witnesses of faith of Jesus Christ, this infant whose birth we celebrate We do our best when we do that, when we follow that command that John passed along in the scripture. John John wrote this, Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But Whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. See, we are the star. We are the star by which others come to see Jesus. Just as the natal star led the wise men, to, to where Jesus, the infant, was, we are the stars that lead others to Christ. Some lived in the dark ages. Others, like Napoleon, are in the dark ages of their own creation. And we can't do anything about that. That, however, doesn't change our responsibility to shine anyway. Traffic lights shine, and they convey a message. Stop, caution, go. Whether anyone obeys the traffic sign is different. Not everyone heeds the message, even though they see the light is there. But the light shines anyway, and that's our task. That's why we were created. People may or may not get our message. They may or may not see the light that shines from us. But that doesn't diminish our call. 
The purpose of Christmas Eve was for the star to shine that all might see. Few did. We celebrate three wise men because there were three gifts mentioned, but we don't know how many. There could have been only one wise man, or, or two because it is, it is wise men. Could have been as few as two, but it could have been hundreds. The star shone for all to see. When someone is stuck in the darkness, shine. When blinded, when blindness is self-selected, shine. We shine best in the darkness. That's where Christ can really be seen. That's why we're not supposed to be separate from society. We're supposed to be a part of society, but we're to live differently. You see, we shine in the darkness. The darkness has not understood the light. As Christians, one of the problems we have is that we are susceptible to defeatism. Our attempts at evangelism didn't work before, so there's no reason to try it again. We judge prematurely. We give up. We tell ourselves that the darkness will always be there. So why bother? And I suppose there's a lot of truth to those feelings But our feelings and our judgment don't matter. See, it isn't about us. The darkness has not, cannot, and will not overcome the light because the darkness has not, cannot, and will not understand it. But our mission is still the same. Our light is to shine. We're still missionaries, and our mission is just that to shine. Goodness, we love God. We worship and we praise Jesus Christ. We ask the Holy Spirit to be with us and we don't understand. Since when did our understanding ever have anything to do with following Jesus? I don't know how God parted the Red Sea. I don't know how Jesus walked on water or or made water into wine or rose from the dead, but I believe that all that happened. I don't understand it, but I believe it with all of my being, all of my heart, mind, and soul. I'm sure that the blind man that Jesus healed with the mud didn't understand, but I bet he praised God and loved Jesus for that miracle. Christians have the disposition that if someone doesn't believe as we do, then they're happy being in the dark. Somehow they're undeserving about having the light cast upon them. Who can understand the mind of God that sent his only son not to a manger, but to a cross? God sent his only son through a peasant girl to a cattle trough, to a a dirty backwater town, to a fickle, presumptuous, unfaithful people, and to die on the cross for us. You see, it wasn't about Jesus coming as an infant. I'm not surprised that the darkness doesn't understand God and chooses to live in darkness. I don't understand God, but... I don't even understand me. Why do I do some of the things I do or say the things I say and and leave others undone and unsaid? If I would presume that I understood God, you need to be looking for a new pastor. The darkness not only presumes to know the light, but it's better than the light. And John didn't understand God, but he prepared the way for Jesus. John asked through his followers. This is why I say John the Baptist did not understand Jesus, and that was his cousin. John sent his followers to find out from Jesus, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? 
And Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear, the dead are raised. And the good news is preached to the poor. Understanding wasn't mentioned anywhere. Only report what you see and experience. And that's what we're called to do. That's what this night is about. We are supposed to shine. Merry Christmas is more than a holiday wish. It's a prayer. It's a a witness of faith. Can we understand that? Yeah, man proposes, but God disposes. Prior to Christmas, long before Christmas, in the beginning was light, true light. The true light was the light of Christ. We are blessed to be the light of Christ. In this world, in this age, in this 21st century, shine. Shine, for that is the reason we were created, we were called, and we are commanded. We're to shine forth the glory of God to all men and women. We have a choice this Christmas. We can shine like a cheap $2 flashlight or we can shine for all we're worth. We can shine with the light of heaven in us. We can shine like the star that hung in the sky over Bethlehem, not for our glory, but for God's glory. Forget about understanding. Let the darkness do what the darkness is going to do. Don't judge the darkness. Because the darkness is doing what its nature proposes it do. Our nature is to shine with the light of Christ that is within us. Because we were created to shine. This evening, Merry Christmas and Amen. Holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt his worth a thrill of hope the weary soul rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh he Lord God, Heavenly Father, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks that, that in great your great mercy and compassion, you allowed your Son, Jesus, to become incarnate and redeem us from our sins, which we confess to you now. Enlighten our hearts through your Holy Spirit that we might always be thankful for your grace and mercy. We We confess confess and and repent repent of our our sins. Comfort Comfort us us in our times times of trouble, pain, and temptation. temptation. Grant Grant us eternal eternal salvation salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose birth we celebrate this day. 
God has heard our confession and forgiven our sin. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. So this is our prayer leading into communion. If you can't be here, uh, obviously no one is here tonight, so the elements are blessed. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a short blessing right now. If, if you're not going to be here tomorrow either, let me just bless you where you are now in whatever you happen to be using. You have to understand that it really doesn't matter that much what we're using for communion as much as the condition of our heart matters. Are we glorifying God? Are we turning ourselves over to him? Are we loving him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Let me just offer a quick blessing. Lord, whatever elements people have at their disposal to have it for communion tonight, I pray that you would bless them for their remembrance of the sacrifice that you made. Lord, you came to earth as an infant, but you came to die on a cross. So Lord, I pray that you would bless the elements of bread in one cup or their substitutes that they might be the body and blood of Jesus Christ for us. Amen. And if you do get to come tomorrow morning, Christmas morning for worship, we will have communion then. I hope you're able to join us. I have to admit, I, I don't know a whole lot about electricity. I, I know enough to keep my fingers from touching bare wires and, and that kind of thing, but I, I found this story interesting. January 21st, 1930, Harold Vidian became a hero. King George V was scheduled to address the nation when someone tripped over the power cord and the broadcast was going to end. I mean, there was just nothing to broadcast. Vidian grabbed both ends of the bare wire to complete the circuit. And the energy, the power that they needed to broadcast ran through his body. The message of Jesus Christ calls for us to complete that circuit. We have the darkness on one side. We have Jesus Christ, the light, on the other. We need to step into that gap. We need to complete that circuit. We need to have that light, that power, that energy run through us. We need that. God needs that from us. That's our purpose. That was what the star did that night for the wise men. That's what the shepherds did for the people that lived in the community. That's our calling. Tonight, I would pray that you would shine so that Christ can be seen through you and that you have the opportunity to glorify God and think back on how it happened that you came to be a Christ follower, how you came to first see the light of Jesus, and then be that light for others. Uh, from Annette and I, I, I just want to wish you a very, very, very Merry Christmas. And this is not how we prefer to have service this evening, but we pray that you'll be blessed and that everything that you desire that Christ would fulfill what, what your needs are. And just a very Merry Christmas to you, really. Amen.